We're going to do a problem on rotational dynamics. This is from chapter 7, number 46 from the end of the chapter. And the question describes a 200 gram, 20 centimeter diameter plastic disc that is spun on its axle by an electric motor. So I'm just going to draw a disc and the mass of the disc is 200 grams, so I'm just going to immediately convert that to kilograms. That's 0 0.2 kilograms. Uh, the diameter of the disc, D, is 20 centimeters, which is 0 0.2 meters. And uh, the axle is attached to the center of the disc, and it is spun around in some direction. It doesn't tell us and it doesn't matter in this particular question. The question is what torque must the motor supply to take the disc from 0 to 1800 RPM in 4 seconds? So we want to know how much torque is needed to spin the disc from 0 RPM to 1800 RPM in 4 seconds. Okay, so a torque, we know, gives rise to an angular acceleration. The rotational version of Newton's second law says the sum of all the torques is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. In this case, there's a single torque that's being applied by a motor to this disk. So the sum of the torques just becomes the one torque that we're looking for. When would there be another torque? For example, suppose there's friction at the axle. Then that would be applying an opposing torque to what the motor is doing. So then we would have the motor torque minus the frictional torque, for example. But here there's just the motor. There's nothing else going on that's affecting the rotation. So there's a single torque is equal to I times alpha. This is what we need to calculate. I is the moment of inertia. What's the moment of inertia for a disk? Well, we just go back to the chapter and look at the equation for the moment of inertia of common shapes. And for a disk, I is 1 half m r squared, where m is the mass of the disk and r is the radius. So this I equals 1 half times 0.2, and the radius is half the diameter, so that's 0 0.1 meters squared, and that gives me 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1, or 10 to the minus 3 kilogram meter squared. So I know I, the only thing that's remaining for me to calculate the torque is to get the angular acceleration. So what is the angular acceleration equal to? Well, that's one of our five kinematic uh, parameters. So I'm going to treat this as a rotational kinematics problem. Uh, there's an angular displacement. There's an initial angular velocity. There's a final angular velocity. There's an angular acceleration. And there's a time. I'm looking for alpha. The problem tells me that the acceleration takes place in four seconds that it starts from an initial angular velocity of zero, and that after four seconds it's going 1800 RPM. I don't know through what angle it rotates, but I won't need to. This is one, two, three numbers. So I'll be able to get the acceleration from this. I just need to convert these RPMs into radians per second. So omega F is 1800 revolutions per minute, and that gets converted into 2 pi radians equals 1 revolution, and 1 minute equals 60 seconds. So I put my unit conversion factors there. The minutes cancel, the revolutions cancel, and omega f is 1800 times 2 pi divided by 60. Well, 18 over 6 is 3, so that's 300 over 10. Uh, which is 30 times 2 pi, which is 60 pi radians per second. Don't worry about it. You can put it in your calculator if you like. 
And then I have uh, three numbers, omega i, omega f, in radians per second, the time in seconds, and I can get alpha from omega f minus omega i over t. That's just the definition of acceleration. Change in velocity divided by the time. So that gives me 60 pi over 4 minus 0, which is 15 pi radians per second squared. So then the torque that's required is 10 to the minus 3. That was my moment of inertia times 15 times pi, and that gives me 15 times 3.14 times 10 to the minus 3, and I get 0 0.047 Newton meters.